Good morning, friends. Um, it's another dreary day here. I had a doctor's appointment this morning. I was going to have Papa drive me because it's supposed to be raining hard, and I didn't want to not be able to find a place to park and then have to run carrying an umbrella. But uh, if he drove me, he could just drop me off at the front door. But anyway, it wasn't raining, so I drove myself this morning. It was a new doctor. It is the doctor that's going to do my hand. And that surgery is going to be on October the 3rd. And the reason I chose the 3rd, it's because school is out for Jill the 7th through the 11th. So that means that uh, somebody will have to stay with home with her on Thursday and Friday, but then the whole next week they'll be out. So that'll give me almost two weeks recovery on my hand, and um, it'll put me past my post-op um, visit to the doctor. So anyway, that I took care of all that this morning. So... Um, yeah, guys, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't make a video yesterday. You know, I was going to. I was going to do it on um, certain days, and I just had this. But, oh, uh, my goodness. Day before yesterday. Was that Monday? Yes, that was my Monday. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Guys, I was so tired. I slept so much on that day. I don't know why. Every time Coda would really get to playing on something i tell you what i would sit in my chair and in two minutes i i know i was asleep and then she'd say gee wake up and she said it's daylight outside so i would wake up then the minute she went off to do something else i'd do the same thing and <laughs> just doze right off finally when she went to sleep i took a whole nap on the couch and uh, I think Papa and Bennett worked outside the almost the entire day. So Pops never come in or anything. So I basically just had a day of sleep. So then yesterday, I think, oh my goodness, well, I, you know, I've got to make a, a video to make up for, uh, for yesterday, for Monday. But there was just so much going on. I was outside so much and it was a beautiful day. It was so cool. Uh, Coda stayed out with Pops a whole lot. Um, I, I, I just never got to it. I, you know, I got my house clean and I, I got things done, but it just kept being something else and something else and something else. So I said, well, today, without fail, you know, I'll get back on some kind of a, I don't have a schedule, but I'll say some kind of video schedule. If I look different, I'm sitting on my cedar chest I don't know why. I don't know why. I just sat down on this cedar chest and propped up the... I guess I was in video mode and I didn't want anything else to discourage me or catch my eye that I needed to do. So, um, I want you to play, pray for one of our listeners. Her name is Doris. And um, she went into the hospital this morning. It was a scheduled visit. And she's going to have, I, I, I think... Uh, a bypass, something with her heart. She was scared last night. Uh, her and I were texting back and forth, and I, I said, Doris, this is the way I look at it. When when I had my hip surgery and uh, when I had my spider bite, you know, the times that I had to be put to sleep for surgery, I said, well, I will wake up. I will wake up here in the hospital, or I will wake up in the arms of Jesus. So, um, sometimes, guys, I get to feeling like maybe I would rather wake up and because, I don't know, because of the weather and everything, sometimes I just think, oh, if I could just find a beautiful place to sit, which I've got millions of them, and just sit in a chair and put my head back and... You don't worry or think about anything because um, when you've got a big family, oh my gosh, everything that affects any family member, it, it comes back on me. And I can't, uh, I just, sometimes I just, I just can't think about it. 
you know, Jake's looking for property. That's good. I pray he finds the right property. And I don't, I don't want it to be too far away because I don't want him to be far away from Brinley so that we don't get to see her because she's way up there with her dad. But nobody listens to what I think. So, and, and then I know Jake and Bree were having a little bit of brother-sisterly arguments over the yard and the chicken pen and you know i feel like i can't s s side with i i can't i just i just can listen as they vent and then uh everybody are, are they get upset with ellie for something and then I feel so sad for Ellie. And it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, Lord, I just need my my mind clear for a little while. I just need to sit. And that was so nice when I went to get my pedicure that day. I was able to just close everything out and sit there in that vibrating chair and have my toes done. But um, sometimes we do. We just need to get away from... Um, from family because the minute I see Bree walking across the yard snaps to my mind. Oh, poor Bree. Then I see Jake. Oh, poor Jake. And then I, you know, I pass by Tony's house and I say, Lord help Tony, you know, it just, it's just something all the time. And, um, I'm tell you, I, I don't know if I told y'all this on my last video, but, um, I, I was begging Papa to get us just a small mobile home and put it on padding or whatever they do to put it, you know, six foot into the air and then we'll never have to move our stuff out again. And then uh, the other day, I'm not, I, I don't think that way anymore because I want to tell you what Lex said. Um... Lester brought him home Saturday and said that um, I tried to get him to come home with me, but he just wanted to come back here. And I said, well, that's fine. So um, when Lester left, Lex kind of rolled over on the couch and he said, there's an energy at this house. And he said, I don't feel that energy at my mom's house and I don't feel that energy at dad's house i only feel it here and i said baby that's jesus you're feeling jesus in this house and i praise god that he feels that and gene and i were talking this is the only constant in his life i started keeping him when he was three weeks old in the afternoon so when he was six weeks old i picked him up and took him back and forth to daycare with me because i only worked uh, i worked like six to, to noon and then from noon till they got home from work i had him here with me so he learned to walk here he learned to talk here him and him and connor so this is their constant and lester has a new house now maria has a new house now then Lester has his second new house now, or his uh, RV. But this is always the same. This hasn't changed. The furniture may change. The floors may change. But his room has been his room since he was six weeks old. And now he's going to be 13. So um, that's what he feels here. Not only does he feel Jesus, but he feels home. He's home. And uh, I, I know all the grandkids in a certain way. You know, this is Jesus' house. We come here to eat. We come here to get snacks. So I don't think moving into a mobile home six foot in the air is going to be sufficient for all my grandchildren. So I've decided, well, I've already told y'all that Papa has, uh, and this is on my mind a lot because we just had a hurricane, but not, not here. It went to Louisiana and we didn't even get that much rain from it. But I told y'all Papa has some saw horses. And then we have two of those um, heavy tables that fold out uh, stuff to do with our furniture. But over there, I have my new buffet. It's antique. 
And uh, I don't know where that's going to go. It's, it's heavy. It's heavy as heck. And then this old chest that Tina gave me, it's an antique. It almost matches that. The handles are the same. It's kind of cool. It's heavy. And then I have my mom's old dresser. It's heavy. And it's like, you know, I, I don't know if we've got enough room to set up everything. But we'll do what we can. And then we'll just keep coming in. Best uh, bandit. But um, in the other rooms, we have the plywood now. And we're going to start our floors and our walls. The painting next week. Next Monday, supposedly. Papa wanted to finish with his kitchen. His outdoor kitchen. Before he come in the house. And him and Ben start painting and stuff. But someone suggested that we do that with a boat deck paint. So that's what we got. And Gene got a, um, he got a clear, clear coat color. So it'll, it'll has the water repellent in it. So maybe water won't soak in if we get a hurricane again or, or the flood. And guys, we may never have another flood. And hopefully it'll be six years at least before we do. And if we do, then we'll, you know, we'll just play it by ear as it goes. But I know for sure I, I can't move into a mobile home because this, this is home. This is home for us. This is home for, I'm not going to say the kids grew up here because, uh, our original house burnt down when Daniel was in high school. So Daniel had uh, a hand in building this, so did Lester. Now, I, I want to tell you something else, too, that's a bit on my mind. Lester wants us all to, to move out of here. He said, you can't trust the river. It's not the Plum Grove it used to be. You know, uh, when my kids were in school, I had a horse and I would ride up to the little the little store, the only one we had in Plum Grove, I'd ride up to the little store on my horse every day. Guys, I could not do that today. You, you would not be safe riding your horse. The, the traffic is, is, it's just horrible. It's, it's not, and that, that's, that, I agree with Lester. This is not the Plum Grove that, that dad grew up in and, and they grew up in. It's not the same place. But when you come off the road and you come up the driveway, it is the same place. This, this is where Daniel chose to put his house. It's where Bree chose to put her house. Kim's down by the road. Um, Steph and Buddy chose to put their houses there. And um, I know the river I, I, I pray to God it doesn't, but if it does, you know, Papa's called his cows up for years because we've always had the river come up behind the house, just never in the house. So that's something he was used to as a kid. You know, you go out, woo, the cows come up, you lock the gate, so they're in front. And um, it, that part is the same, it's the same as it was all his life and all of our married life and Daniel's life and Jake's life. And so I don't know why it bothers Jake so much to call his, his cows up if the river floods. It's, it's no big deal. You just go out and holler and you close one gate, open another one, run them through and shut that gate. I don't know what the big deal is. But if, if Jake wants to live somewhere else, let him do what his heart wants. Um, will he be happy and content somewhere else? Um, him and Lissa and, and the baby will make that their home, and they'll have a home place just like, you know, Gene and I had the home place up on the hill. So I pray he's making the right move, but the, you never know until you just really pour your heart out to God and, and then listen for his answer. But um, I, don't, I don't know. Bree's built her big uh, garage over there. Daniel's got his big carport. His, 
I, I just, I can't say, okay, well, guys, I'm moving away. Who wants to come with me? It's not as, as simple as Lester, Lester did it. As, you know, Lester has more money than us. And he, he, he was able, maybe his credit's probably better. And it's him and Jamie together, and they both worked. So they were able to buy this spot. You know, we don't have any money to go buy someplace. And even if we did, Dad is not going to leave this hill. This is where he played as a child. This is where his dad played as a child. This is where our kids played. And uh, we're not, we're not going to leave it. We're not going to leave it as hard as it gets. Um... We'll just play, please, Lord, no more floods. If they come, let them be deep. Let our water repellent paint work. Let our epoxy that we're going to put on our floor work. And then we'll just go on from there because we're happy. You know, we've been 45 years on this hill. That's not right. You know, in one of my videos, I said we've been married 70 years. And then after that, I thought, 70 years? I'm only 75 years old. I know I didn't marry when I was 75. I mean, when I was five, I married him when I was 18. So, but all of our years together, this, this hill has been, has been our home spot. So, I, I know Lester um, is thinking of the best. Uh, of what he wants the best and safest for us. But um, we couldn't just go. It would have to be like Daniel go with us, Bree go with us, Ellie needs to go with us, uh, Buddy needs to go with us, Kim has to go with us. So we, we can't just move. So And I appreciate Le Lester thinking about that. And I know, um, if any, I know probably Daniel would spend half his time at his, uh, at his little lake cabin anyway. But, um, you know, in your heart, what's right to do and what's not. And it's, it's just not a, a right thing for us to move away, um, as much as he would like us to. It's just not, um. It's not something that, that we could do. Um, also, I want to tell you all, Daniel said the other night, maybe he was filming, I don't know, he said, Dad, did you just a man that uh, on, on, he has a channel and he tells how much everybody, he goes into all of these different um, analytics of different uh, uh, YouTube people, and he, he starts telling how much they make. And Daniel said, Dad, did you, did you know you made 200000 last year? <laughs> I thought, I wish he had made 200000 last year. We would have had enough money to raise our big house up if Dad had made that much. Guys, never read what, what those people say. I don't know where they get those numbers, or, but... Uh, I, I thought, oh my gosh, everybody's sending us treats and, and, and get, helping us with cow food. And they now they're thinking we made $200,000 last year. And I just thought that was, uh, I, don't, I don't know how you get people, you know, if you're going to do it, it, do honest things. It's, it's like, what does Trump say? Fake news. It's fake news, people. It's fake news. So I don't know how you get people to uh, to stop saying that, or if they're if they're going to go and dig up all that stuff, then put it on the truth. You know, don't. Anyway, okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else I wanted to tell y'all? Coda, she is here, guys. But she's in there having mac and cheese. And um, she just, I brought her home from the doctor. I brought her french fries and a cheesecake. And she ate almost all of her cheesecake. Yeah, you know, I brought me a cheesecake and one for Papa. Woody, 
Uh, Verdi. Guys, I wish I had gotten a chihuahua. Verdi doesn't mind. If anybody has a Shih Tzu and has any tricks for making them mind, I wish you'd tell me. Because she will look at me. She will not come in the house with me. She'll just sit there and look at me. And I close the door. And then not even 10 seconds, she's scratching at the door. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you make me so angry, you know? Just come in when I ask you to come in. And I, t I pop, Papa forbid me. He, he actually forbid me to get another chihuahua. He said, look at the mistake you made with Buster. Although he will never say you shouldn't have got Buster because he loves Buster so much. I can't stand Buster. Anyway, and he said, you know, um, where is he? Kippy. Kippy got a little bit bigger than you wanted and his ears didn't stand up. And I said, well, Bandit's perfect. You can't ride in the car. And if you try to say, let's go bye-bye, he hides. <laughs> but um, they mind. He minds so good. Kippy minds so good. But Buster minds really good. But Woody and Ferdy, they're horrible. Now, I'm not joking. They're horrible. Woody will sit in the front yard and look at me while I call his name. Come on, Woody. Woody, come on. Birdie now will do the same exact thing. And I'm thinking, when have I ever listened to what Papa tells me to do? He can't forbid me, but I just wanted to keep, it was going to be our fifth dog. So I wanted to keep everything in a happy mode. So, um, I don't know. I have this little Birdie, which I love. And she gets in my lap and she loves me, but she is not loving me enough yet to make me want to just sit there and have a heart attack while I'm waiting for her to stand on her feet and walk into the house. So I have patience, but usually the kids take all that. And Papa takes a lot of patience too, but anyway, I get, I know y'all know he's working on his little kitchen and Coda Bear stayed out with him a long time yesterday, locked, just, you know, doing things in the kitchen. And she loves it out there because he just, he gave her a, a, those buckets of peanuts and things that y'all see. And he opened one for her and set it on the table and had the TV going. And she wasn't missing me at all. I just go out and check on her. And she said, I'm good. Go in the house. I'm good. I'm fine. Go in the house. Okay, you sit out here and eat those peanuts, baby, and watch TV. Anyway, he, um, I, I'm glad he's got his little kitchen going. You know, we went through a lot for him trying to decide where he was going to put the kitchen and what Kim wanted to do and Daniel wanted him to do. And I said, let him do it. it it's his mind. It, it's his little dream now his kitchen's gone he has to tear that down so let him have his own little idea and dream about where he wants his kitchen and it looks really really cute out there and he's just he can't wait till he makes a cooking video for y'all and i'm tell you what he's gonna while he's cooking in the wood stove he's going to have to have the air conditioner going at the same time because it gets hot in there because there's no ventilation. He only has one window. He's um, Somebody's bringing him another window, but they haven't brought it yet. So he's going to be so hot in there. And I'm thinking he's going to be so thankful to God that he's not really a pioneer man. So although if he was a pioneer man, it would be me cooking. So I'm thanking God he didn't let me be born in those days because um, I cooked breakfast and dinner when my kids were in school and we all ate at the same time and that was important to me and we did it, I swear, when Daniel graduated from high school, his mama stopped cooking. Um, 
Uh, I, Papa cooks for Lex when he's here on the weekends. I'll fix for Coda, but pop a waffle in the oven, that kind of stuff. But um, guys, I just want you to know uh, that I love you. And I'm so sorry I didn't make a video Monday. And I'm so sorry that I didn't catch up on Tuesday. But here it is Wednesday. And uh, and here I am. So, um, y'all pray for uh, for Doris. She's one of, one of our uh, followers, one of our YouTube friends. Um, it's scared. It, 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 it is scary when you go in for a surgery. It was scary when I went in just for my hip replacement. And you know they're going to put you to sleep. And you know that people sometimes don't make it out of anesthesia. So you, you, you're, you can't help but be scared. And then you try to tell yourself, so if I don't wake up, I'll wake up with Jesus. I, you know, what's the big deal? And then you think, well, I miss my family. I mean, you, all these thoughts come. So it's better than, well, try not to think of it. I was kind of in shock because I thought having this carpal tunnel syndrome thing, I thought um, it would just be maybe going to the hospital and sit there and have it done. But he said, they will put me to sleep. So I'm thinking, okay, well, don't worry about it because I will wake up somewhere. So guys, I just love you. Please pray for Doris that, that she won't have any, any fear. Well, it's it's two o'clock probably her surgery's over by now so but i have been praying for her this morning um i pray that for jake that he makes a right decision on his property and uh, i heard the property that he's looking at now has a really cute house but it was built in the 60s so it has a lot of the the colored tile and um and stuff like that and the the old tile on the floor so i'm anxious to see it because i would probably just don't change a thing you know just paint the walls don't change a thing keep that tile when i watch house hunters and they want um they want something that's old so they go in and they say well it has no closets duh houses back then didn't have closets if they were built in the you know, early 1900s or late 1800s. And, and then they go in, into some of the bathrooms and it's it's all pink. Pink commode, um, pink tile, pink bathtub. And I just, oh, it's beautiful. And she said, this would be a gut job. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with y'all? Why do you say you want an old home? Why do you say you want something built in the early 1900s? When you know it's going to have tile, it's going to have no closets or small closets. So I, I get so angry at them. And I know if they start, I haven't seen Jake's bathroom. I haven't seen the house. I haven't seen the property. I do know it's, uh, it's in Kuntz. And that's where my grandmother lived, in Kuntz. So that's a, a trip that we're used to taking. It's an hour drive. There's a nice back way. And uh, yeah, that's where my, where my grandmother lived. Uh, her last days was, was in Kuntz. And it's not too far from Sperger where I grew up. But you know what? When I went to the last reunion that they had, it's called Sperger X's. So anybody that graduated from Sperger or went to Sperger comes back. And I could not wait to see everybody and I hadn't been to Sperger school since the eighth grade the end of the eighth grade so it's been that many years since I've seen those people but you know our lives are different now and I would I would listen to them talk about their churches and um and then things that their grandkids did in school I think their grandkids are in Sperger school and at first I was a little jealous I, I loved living in Sperger. I loved going to Sperger school. But then I think of all the things in my life that would not have happened had my dad not moved us to California. I wouldn't have met my husband. Uh, there's, there's so many things 
that that I would have missed if we had not gone to California. So, uh, you know, God God puts us where he wants us. He, he works it out sometimes in ways that that we can't understand what was the need in that, what, you know. Um, you can argue with God. You can beg God. But most of the time, if you just be quiet and let him make his plans and, and, and not not gripe at him too much because you're not liking the plan that he made. <sighs> anyway. Okay, guys. I love y'all. I am going now. I hope you have a happy rest of the day, Wednesday. And, um, oh, something else. We get Lex again this this Friday. Maria's letting him come in because... Boop, 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 boop. Maria is allowing him to come again, even though it's not his weekend. Because he did not have a good ball game Monday afternoon. So there's some things that Lester thinks he really... And his mom was upset. Because he's had two really good games. And then this one had a few things. Well, they threw him a pass and he missed it. And Lester thinks it kind of got in his head. So uh, he missed a couple of tackles after that. Because he plays offense and defense. And uh, so when when I got the text from Lester, it says, "Mom, can you pick up Lex on Friday?" And I said, "I said, oh, Jean, <laughs> we're gonna get Lex, and they are gonna spend Saturday hitting and hitting and hitting and catching and catching and catching." I said, "That poor baby's gonna be so tired." So when Lester called. Uh, a little earlier, a little while ago, about an hour ago, and I said, "You're gonna, you're gonna work the devil out of that little guy, aren't you?" And he goes, "Oh, mom, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gonna do." And he said, "I, I feel like I haven't, um, even though I explained things, I haven't been uh, physically able to work with him and take hits." He said, "So this time, I'm, I'm gonna bundle up and I'm gonna take some hits and give some hits, and we're gonna." He said, yeah, we're going to have a good workout. <laughs> Poor Lex. He may be sorry that he comes down this weekend. But, um, okay, guys, I really, I'm going this time. I'm not going to start talking about anything else. If I can close my mind while I say, bye, friends. I love y'all.